we have come into his house. We have gathered his name to worship. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Jesus Christ the Lord. Let's forget concentrate on him and worship him let's forget about ourselves concentrate on him and worship him oh let's forget about ourselves concentrate on him and worship Christ the Lord worship him Jesus Christ the Every time I see us together like this, I know it's time to worship the Lord. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is feared above all other gods. For all gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord, he made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to thank. Keep our hands in praise this morning, everybody, and let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. Lord, somebody needs you this morning. Somebody needs peace. Somebody needs to have a settlement in the heart. And so I beseech you, Lord, as you do that, because I know you will, that you will send holy angels from heaven to encompass each and every one of us, because there's somebody that needs something today. And I pray that your spirit might guide to that person that which he or she needs. May your name be glorified as you show up for each and every one of us. And as we submit 
ourselves and as we surrender our hearts in the name of Jesus I ask let the church say amen Buenos dias. <laughs> feliz sábado. En este hermoso sábado, estamos muy feliz con la visita de nuestros amigos y hermanos de habla en español. Dios ha separado este día cada semana para bendiciones con su amor y paz. Esperemos que tengas un día lleno de bendiciones del el Señor. Feliz sábado y bienvenidos. Chantez louange dans l'assemblée, dans l'assemblée des frères. Sur ces notes, encore bienvenue. Good morning and happy Sabbath, visitors. And if you're here, please stand. Don't be shy. Amen. I'm happy that you guys are here today, and our pastor will come down to give you a special welcome. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Let me take the easy side first. All right. Welcome to church today. I uh, want to just... How are you? And what's your name? My name is Maureen. Maureen. And where are you from? I live in Lehigh here. Lehigh. Welcome to our church today. New Yorker, but you reside in Lehigh. Lehigh is the best place to be. Don't worry to go back to New York, please. All right. Who invited you here today? Um, Sister Dylan. All right. Wonderful. Thank you for doing that. Hope you have a wonderful day of worship with us. Let the church say amen. And this is? I'm Miranda. Miranda? And where are you from? I'm from Jamaica. From Jamaica. We welcome you to our church today. Who invited you here? My mom. Your mom. Wonderful. I hope you have a wonderful day of worship with us. Amen. Let's say amen, folks, as we... Welcome all folks. I will. Yeah. How are you? Good morning. I'm very well, thank you. Wonderful. Where are you from? I'm from the beautiful island of Barbados. Barbados. Somebody say amen for Barbados. And uh, what is your name? My name is Angela Smith. Angela Smith. And who invited you here today? The Blakes are my beautiful, wonderful, long-term friends. Beautiful, wonderful, long term. I'm glad to meet them. <laughs> Welcome to our church. Hope you have a wonderful day of worship with us. Let's say amen. For All right. And you, sir, you are? I am Jalil. 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 And where are you from, sir? Jamaica. From Jamaica. We welcome you. Who invited you here? Grandmother. Grandmother. Wonder wonderful. Welcome to our church. Hope you have a good day of worship with us. Amen. Let's say amen for Jalil. Amen. All right. Okay. And then I'll run around here to everybody happy in the Lord today? Yes. Amen. Good. I want to welcome you to our church today. And what is your name? My name is Iris Cruz. Iris Cruz. And where are you from? I am from Orlando. I'm from the Winter Park Spanish Seventh-day Adventist Church. Wonderful. Did you understand the welcome? Oh, very good, very good. We speak all languages here. Amen. amen. No, you say amen. amen. Yeah, amen. Okay. <laughs> Let's go here. And I guess the, the cruise, you're related to the cruises over here. Yes. And your name? My name is Maritza Westra. Marissa? Maritza. Marissa. Marissa. From? I'm originally from the beautiful Lake Region state of Michigan. Whoa! But currently living in Puerto Rico. Oh, wonderful. Let's say amen. I know Lake Region. I used to be in Lake Region. And he invited you. And is he related to any of you? Brother. brother. You have a wonderful brother. We welcome you to our church today. Good to see you. Let the church say amen again. Sorry. Yeah. Happy to have you in our church. You have a wonderful day of worship. How are you today? And your name? Evans Lockton. Evans Lockton. Where are you from? Lockton. From 
Homestead. From Homestead, Florida. Welcome. Who invited you to church here? Victor Morgan. Victor Morgan, wonderful. We welcome you to our church. This is your wonderful family. Uh, Maya. Maya? Yeah, I have a granddaughter by the name of Maya. Wonderful. Welcome to our church. Welcome to our church. Your land, Lockton. Your land and? To Wilson. 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 We welcome you to church. Are these folks behind you two belonging to you? All right. Let me take care of them. We, and you are, sir? Joshua Lockton. Joshua Lockton and? Jackie Crease. Jackie Crease and? Helen Theophane from Miami. Helen, wonderful. Let's say a big amen for this entourage. Come on, church, let's say a big amen for the entourage here. We welcome you to our church today. We hope you have a wonderful day of worship with us, okay? And we have one more. Wonderful, and he is the, ma the patriarch, all right, of the family. Let me, get, let me touch him here. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Welcome to our church. Hope you enjoy our worship with us today. God bless you. Okay, all right. Okay, did we forget somebody over there? Hold up the hand, hold up the hand for me. Or in the back, got somebody in the back, okay? Welcome, welcome. And we, did we pass you by? You were hiding from me? Yeah, hiding, what's your name? My name is Iris, I'm from Ocala. I was from Ocala. Yeah, my mother lived in Ocala. Wonderful. Welcome. And you're part of this family? And who is this little girl? Adriana. Adriana. Everybody say, welcome, Adriana. Welcome. Wonderful. Happy to have you in our church today. Have a wonderful Sabbath. And back here. And welcome to our church. Your name is? Pauline. 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 Where are you from, Pauline? Jamaica. Jamaica. Who invited you to here? Eric. Eric. Eric, wonderful. Hope you have a wonderful day of worship with us. Amen, church. Let's all get up and just welcome each other. Let's welcome our guests today as we, as we sing, smile, everybody smile. All right. Shall we all stand? Everybody smile. Everybody smile. Everybody smile. Everybody smile. Everybody smile. Everybody smile. Won't you greet somebody in Jesus' name? Won't you tell them that you love them in Jesus' name? Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Yeah, you make my day. Jesus loves Everybody you. Everybody sing it now. Smile. Everybody, Everybody smile. smile. Everybody smile. Church, say amen. 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 We want to welcome everyone to church today. We have our birthdays um, Mordecai Neal, Sharon Wallace Campbell, Brother Neal here, Robert Thomas, and Paul Mears Jr. Anybody here for the birthday song? Let's do it. Go to see Sister Rose. Welcome.
Let's all sing together. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy 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 Have Sister Sharon, happy birthday to you. God bless you. May you have many, many more. All right. Uh, do we have no anniversaries? Okay. Uh, let's remember some people in prayer today. We are praying for Sister Aries, number two, who you know is having some debts over the last few weeks in Jamaica. And she goes again to bury her brother uh, this next week. And uh, we want to give a praise for Sister Susan Hamilton. Amen. Had an accident on Monday. And uh, she had her company with her too. Little Kiva and Miles. Uh, the car is total, but they are alive. Totally alive. Amen. So let's give a praise. Let's put our hands together, thanking the Lord for his, his goodness. Uh, this major crash on Joel. I want to remember the Ruddox today. Uh, they have been suffering losses in their family as well, together with uh, illnesses. And we just want to lift them up to the Lord today, brother and sister Ruddock. I'd like to make a comment. There are others who we know are on the list with Sister Sheila and uh, we have also Barry and Vicky Lindsay, who have been recovering. Barry has been recovering from knee surgery in Detroit. And Vicky called this week. She was in the hospital for a few days, but she's out now, and she sends her greetings to the church. Amen. Let's remember them. Barry and Vicky out there for the summer in Detroit. Uh, the nominating committee report will be read later on in the service today. Uh, last Sabbath, we read almost the entire report. It was a partial report, but most of the, the committee heads were read. Today, it's the full report. We're reading officers' lists only, only the heads of departments and their assistants. Uh, during the course of that reading, we will roll the rest of the committee names on the screen. But if you hear your name, you're expected to be at officers' meeting tomorrow from 9 to 5. I will have another reading of the list of the officers and the invitees to the officers' meeting at the end of the sermon today. So please listen out for your names. So if you don't hear your name in the officers' list and the assistants' list, remember the committee members' names will not be read because there are too many. However, please note that every head of the department, every assistant will have a full list of the committee in their hands tomorrow in the handbook for the officers meeting. So everybody will know who you are. At this time, we, we point out that just about every member of the committees, various committees have been called and we have had responses, mostly positive responses. Some have not been positive, but we have probably a 90% positive response and we give God the glory for that. And um, so we'll read those names later on, just giving you a heads up on that. And then we'll take a vote on it today uh, so that we will move forward to our installation on next Sabbath. So at the end of the service, I'd like you who are to attend the meeting tomorrow to listen to that reading of the names when I get done preaching and meet with me for five minutes on the organ side towards the front. I will not go to the door today because I need to meet with you immediately to give instructions and directions for tomorrow. All right? So uh, that's to come a little later on. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for our guests being here in church today. We'll now have the, the clerk come forward and do the announcements. Thank you. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Whew. All right. Quick announcements. Um, starting with this afternoon, 
It's um, graduation for Vacation Bible School. Amen. For those of you who didn't know, this past week from Monday on to yesterday was Vacation Bible School here for the children. Amen. And we had a good showing and it was a great week. So this afternoon in place of AY at 6 p.m., please come out and see what um, was done during the week, how your children perform, and hear about the grand time that we had. On Wednesday evenings, or Wednesday afternoons, the evenings are so long now, at 7 p.m., it's our midweek refreshment, which is Bible study, or some people may want to say prayer meeting. Please come out for your weekly refreshment for Bible study. I have here um, women's ministry, and we know that's in 2019, but um, you can start registering or go visit the page. The website is in your bulletin on here, so please start taking a note of that. Tomorrow will be the officers meeting, and a little later on, um, you will hear all about that also when Pastor meet to give us where the location and directions. We have also our education department. We have back to school. And it's a lot of information, and I'm not even going to attempt it. I'm going to ask Sister Nadine to come up and say thank you. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. How you guys doing? Great. Good. How you guys doing today? Wonderful. Are you happy to be here? Amen. All right, so back to school is August 4th. Today is the deadline for the vouchers. Um, you should have a form like this, okay, yes. They're outside in the foyer. We will be collecting them after church, okay? Um, just a few tips. Please, when you turn in these forms, do not walk away. Whoever you give it to, when you give it to a member of the education department, don't just give it to them and walk away. Make sure you receive a voucher in exchange. Okay? Otherwise, we will not be looking for you. And be mindful, um, there are a lot of guests, and we don't know their names. So we won't know who to contact. So please, if you give these in, get a voucher. Okay? The other thing, very important. You need to be here with your voucher in order to get, a supp get supplies. Um, we do not want one person bringing five, six vouchers. Okay? That's not going to happen. There's a name on it. We need the person who's representing that name to be here to get their supplies. Is that fair enough? Thank you. All right. I'm glad we're all in agreement. And you know our little motto, no voucher? No voucher? All right. You got it. No voucher, no supplies. So make sure when you get your voucher, you put it in a safe place because I don't want anybody coming back and say, but Sister Gordon, you know me. You know you gave me the voucher. Come on. You know I come here. No, no, no. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. And it's not to say that you won't get anything, but we certainly will be serving everyone with vouchers first. And if stuff is left over, then that's when you will be served. So if you have a voucher, make sure you bring your voucher so you can get your stuff, right? Um, the education team will be meeting on the piano side after church to collect these forms and give you your vouchers. Okay? Do we all understand? Yes. All right. You have a blessed Sabbath. Okay. Um, and just um, coming up in August, we like to give you fair warning of all the activities here. Um, just remember Pathfinder and Adventurers that um, your investor service will be there. Okay, and I'd like to leave with you. Give me, I'm sorry, I'm getting late messages.
Okay, thank you. All right, so just leaving with you a thought. That message is not for today. Um, I know we're going through time. Sometimes it's difficult. There are lots of things that's happening that sometimes will cause us to go astray. I just want to leave with you Joshua 1 verse 9, which God said, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Have a blessed Sabbath. Uh, just want to say a big thank you to Sister Elaine Hamilton and the VBS team for a wonderful VBS week. Although she pinches me on the side, put our hands together, everybody, for VBS. And they had a wonderful time back there, and it was hard work, and we appreciate it. Uh, and Sister Sheila stood by her as usual, and a bunch of volunteers amongst the young people. Let's say a big amen. We thank you. We appreciate you. Thank God you bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. The opening hymn is 306, Draw Me Near. Please stand. standing for the mission, motto, and theme. The mission. The mission of the Lehigh Seventh-day Adventist Church is to articulate the life of Christ through its diverse congregation by the unity outreach, by being a nurturing, active center of faith, hope, worship, fellowship, and loving service. Theme and motto. Uh, open hearts, open arms, and open hands. Theme. Open hearts, we come before you now. With open arms, we embrace your love. With open hands, we touch your face as we reflect your marvelous grace, reaching the world through the center of.
seated. Good morning, church. The scripture reading will be taken from 2 Kings chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedidah, the daughter of Adiah of Boscoth, and he, did was, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Now it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan the scribe, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshlam, to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hilkiah the high priest, that he may count the money which has been brought into the house of the Lord, which the doorkeepers have gathered from the people, and let them deliver it into the hands of those doing work, who are the overseers of the house of the Lord. Let them give it to those who are in the house of the Lord doing the work to repair the damages of the house. May the Lord bless his holy word. It. Let's give him a big one. Let's give him a big one. Yeah. Yes. Maestro. Yeah. Thank you, Ose. As we indicated earlier on, uh, we'll be reading the full nominating committee report at this time. I'm going to invite <coughs> Elder Troy Campbell to read the report. I remind you that we're reading just the heads of departments and the assistant heads, and that the full membership of committees will be in the hands of the heads on tomorrow when we have our officers meeting. Um, also, kindly note that at the end of today's meeting, you will have additional names read as people who belong in the officers meeting tomorrow because all the names that appear in the heads and uh, the assistant heads are not the total list for officers meeting. We have a lot of young people who will have a youth forum there and so those names will come later on. 
again, please note that everybody uh, will see names on the screen, though, as we go from committee to committee. And then if you didn't see your name and you already gave an answer to your call that you received from the nominating committee, just check with us afterwards and we will right size that if needs be. So this time we're going to invite Sister Merlin Cadet, our secretary, Sister Yvette Thompson, who have been an assistant to her, along with Ella Troy Campbell, who will read the list to come forward. Kind of listen carefully. At the end of the reading, we'll seek an action on these officers. Thank you. Elders, Troy Campbell, first elder, Wilson Blake, second elder, Paul Mears, third elder. We have Leslie Wonder, David Cadet, Victor Morgan, Lawrence Joseph, Herbert Hutchinson, Grace Allen, Sheila Williams, Isaiah Bonzel, Lily Hunter, Duval Ruddock, Georgette Hines, Clifton Barrett, Jocelyn Locke, Paris Renaud. Our deacons, our, our elders in training, Mark Anneville, Ose Allen, Ashley Mears, and Rowena Samuels. For deacons, head, Nordman Elliott, first assistant, Ezekiel Francis, second assistant, Robert Thomas, third assistant, Piera Cluche, fourth assistant, Dave Lewis, fifth assistant, Jean Joseph. Deaconesses, head, Merlene Bromfield, first assistant head, Carmelita McPherson, second assistant, Felicia Johnson, third assistant, Cynthia Rose. Family ministers, head, Troy and Sharifa Campbell, second assistants in family ministries with responsibilities for men's and women's ministries, we have Clifton Barrett and Jocelyn Locke. Treasury, our head is Roger Hamilton. Our assistant head, Georgette Hines. Finance, head is Paul Mears Sr. On to fundraising, our head is Piera Cluch. First assistant head is Yvette Thompson. Second assistant head is Ava Barrett. Our church clerk, head is Laureen Downs. Assistants, Elaine Hamilton. Annette Bassan, Tricia Lewis, Marlene Lewis, Unit Blake, Fabiola Pierre, Alexis Francis, Nadine Saintville, and Joycelyn Pendenque. Personal Ministries, our head is Yvonne Jones. Assistant Head and Interest Coordinator is Joycelyn Locke. Sabbath School Council, Victor Morgan is head. David Cadet, Assistant Head. We have Duval Ruddock, Tanya Henry, Dennis Hines, Mona Joseph. Head is Velda Bob Elliott, Christina Cluche, Solange Delpy, Angelica Dubois, Valent Smith, Shanique Barrow, Maud Villane, Brianna Neal, and Marie Anneville are all assistants. Primary teachers for Sabbath School. Head is Sheila Williams, assistants, Merlene Bromfield, Nadine Saintville. Cradle role, our leader is Marie Dagoose. Assistant leaders, Alric Thompson, Grace Allen, Leela Parker, Evelyn May Smith, and Casey Allen are all assistants. On to our education department, Nadine Gordon is our head. Susan Hamilton is our assistant head. Music ministry, Carl Dahmer is our head. Ivis Morrison, first assistant. Darrell Morrison, second assistant. Our sanctuary choir, Sister Hamilton, Susan Hamilton is head. Youth choir, Darrell Morrison is head. Children's choir, Sharon Wallace-Campbell is head, and Fabiola Pierre is our assistant. On to religious liberty, where we have El Elder Duval Ruddock as our head. Communications and multimedia, head is Troy Campbell, first assistant, Sivan Anderson, 
Second assistant head is Paul Mayers. Third, Bruce Desarme. And fourth assistant is Benjamin Rachel. Committee to services, our head is Joan Pasco. Our first assistant is Joseph Pasco. Second assistant is Unit Blake. Third assistant, Sister Carmelita McPherson. Decorating, Doris Leslie is our head. Sharifa Campbell and Cynthia Rose are her assistants. Hospitality, Velda Bob Elliott is our head. John Pasco is first assistant. David Cadet is second. Merlene Bromfield, third assistant. Yvette Thompson, fourth assistant. And Robert Thomas is fifth assistant. Ushers and greeters, Sharon Wallace Campbell is our head. Jazz McKenzie, Nadine Gordon as our assistants. Hostess, Merlene Bromfield heads. Yvonne Jones is our assistant. Our Pathfinder Executive Committee, Merlene Bromfield is our club executive director. Our director is, uh, Pathfinder director is Deborah Henry. Our Pathfinder deputy director is Brother Maurice Henry. Brother Gary Robinson is our adventurer director. Sharice Robinson is our adventurer deputy director number one. And Christine Clark is our adventure deputy director number two. Youth Forum, formerly AYS. Savon Anderson is our head. Ivis Morrison is our first assistant head. Ashley Mears is our second assistant head. Mark Anneville, third assistant. Michael Mears, fourth assistant. AYC, Mark Anneville is our head. Our recreation, Savon Anderson, also heads. Genevieve Desarme, first assistant. Ivis Morrison, second. Steve Isley, third. Lester Gordon, fourth, and Demetri Darmy, fifth assistant. Health and temperance, Sharice Robinson heads. Whitlin Alexis, Peter Lewis, Rigetti Fortune are our, head, our assistants. Historians, Elder Leslie Wonder is our head, and Elder Sheila Williams is our assistant. Prayer ministry, Elder Sheila Williams also heads, and Paris Renaud is our assistant. Building maintenance, Robert Thomas is our head. Ezekiel Francis is our first assistant, Joseph Pasco second, and Attila Kiss is our third assistant. Emergency response and risk management, Elder Wilton Blake heads. Joseph Pasco is our assistant. We also have Roger Hamilton, Nordman Elliott, Janet Ruddock, and Sharice Robinson serving as assistants. Okay, you have heard the report, and uh, this time we're going to entertain a motion from the floor to accept this report as read. All right, is there a second? All in favor say aye. Those opposed, nay. It's carried. Thank you very much. I want to thank our committee for working hard at this and accomplishing this task and in a very nice and collegial manner. Very spiritual, very committed, and I am proud of them. So I want to ask that you who have been chosen work hard and well for the Lord Jesus Christ this year. And may God bless each of us abundantly. Let the church say amen. amen. It will work. Amen. Now remember, at the end of today's meeting, today's service, all those who are heads and assistants, meet with me please, right here on the organ side up front, and then listen also to other names that will be read, okay, for, for the youth forum at that time, at the end of the service. Okay, God bless. church. Happy Sabbath. Please give to the little church so the big church can grow.
Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Good morning. I hear more of the adults than the kids. Oh my goodness. How you guys doing this morning? Good. Okay. Oh, we still have money coming in here. That's right. Keep it coming. Okay. So. The story I'm going to tell you this morning is about rain. How many of you guys like the rain? Do you guys like the rain? I see two hands, three, okay. Seems like the majority of them do not like the rain, okay. All right, well, I'm gonna tell you this little story. So it's about a little girl. So a little girl had been shopping with her mom at a shopping center. She must have been about six years old. This beautiful, red-haired, freckle-faced image of innocence. It was pouring outside the kind of rain that gushes over the top of rain gutters, so much in a hurry to hit the earth, it has no time to flow down the spout. We all stood there under the awning and just inside the door of the center. We waited, some patiently, others irritated because nature messed up their hurried day. I'm always mesmerized by rainfall. I got lost in the sound and sight of the heavens, washing away the dirt and dust of the world. Memories of running, splashing, so carefree as a child, came pouring in as a welcome reprieve from the worries of my day. The little voice was so sweet as it broke the hypnotic trance, we were all caught in. Mom, let's run in the rain, she said. What, mom asked. Let's run through the rain, she repeated. No, honey, we'll wait until it slows down a bit, mom replied. Now you know this mom is not from Jamaica. She's not a Jamaican parent, because first of all, you tell a Jamaican parent, let's run in the rain. She said, Pitney, you're crazy, want to you? <laughs> so you know this is not a Jamaican mom we're dealing with. All right, this young child waited about another minute and repeated, mom, let's run in the rain. We'll get soaked if we do, mom said. No, we won't, mom. That's not what you said this morning, the young girl said as she tugged at her mom's arm. This morning? When did I say we could run through the rain and not get wet? Don't you remember when you were talking to daddy about his cancer? You said, if God can get us through this, he can get us through anything. Now the entire crowd stopped dead silent. You could hear anything but the rain. You couldn't hear anything but the rain. It was that silent. No one came or left in the next few minutes. Mom paused and thought for a moment about what she would say. Now, some would laugh it off and scold her for being silly. Some might even ignore what was said, but this was a moment of affirmation in a young child's life, a time when innocent trust can be nurtured so that it will bloom into faith. Honey, you are absolutely right. Let's run through the rain. If God let us get wet, well, maybe we just needed washing, Mom said. Then off they ran. We all stood watching, smiling and laughing as they darted past the cars and, yes, through the puddles. They held their shopping bags over their heads just in case they got soaked. But they were followed by a few who screamed and laughed like children all the way to the cars. And yes, I did. I ran. I got wet, I needed washing. You know, circumstances in our life or people can take away your material possessions. They can take away your money, they can take away your health, but no one can ever take away your precious memories. So don't forget to make time and take the opportunities to make memories every day. Amen? Amen. 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 So what did you guys learn from this story? Those of you who don't like the rain, did you change your mind about the rain? No? Okay, someone said no, I still don't like the rain. Okay. And he's from Jamaica. Well, no, he, he has Jamaican parents, but he was born here, so <laughs> maybe that's why he don't like the rain. 
All right, so anything? Anyone have any comments? Still don't like the rain? No? Okay. Would you like to pray for, for us today? Which one of you would like to pray? Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're, you, got, you woke us up this morning and we're here today. Um, please help us to be, we thank you that you always keep us safe and please help us to do, to do what's right. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, you guys can go back to your seats. Good morning, church. It's offertory time, the time when you give back to the Most High. So please, the deacons, collect the offering. stand reading for text of Psalm 50 offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the most high call upon me in the day of trouble I, I will deliver you and you shall glorify me whoever offers praise glorifies me and to him who orders his conduct aright I will show the salvation of God our eternal father we want to show thanksgiving because you're blessing us daily. We want to bring a portion of the goods that you've given us. Please use us and use this offering as you please. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen.
praise and worship time. Chosen Jenna, Ray, Sean, 
Call the log for it to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. God called for to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. I know who God says I am, what he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know who I am, I know who God says I am, what he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know who God am. I'm walking in power, I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor. I know who I am, I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor, cause I know who I am. We are a chosen generation, called forth to show His excellence. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. Call for to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. I know who God says I am, what he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know who I am, I know who God says I am, where he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I'm working in power, I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor, I know who I am. I'm working in power, I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor, cause I know who I am. Oh, 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 oh I know who I am. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? For I know who I am. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? For I know who I am. Of anything we can give, you are God, and that's 
that's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and time and after we have been so blessed by our young ones Amen. right now I'm inviting us to come forward the ones who don't feel like it's enough to just whisper a prayer to the Lord we want to sh pour our hearts out to him which sometimes we do by coming to the altar and kneeling so I invite you to do that now if you so please the others I'm asking you to kneel if you can, where you are, as we petition the throne of grace this morning. Oh, yeah. 
daughter. We're praying for Sister Aries, Angela Aries. We call her Angela Aries number two. The Ruddox, Sister Felicia Johnson, Sister Susan Hamilton, Miles and Kiva in the same breath as well, Joycelyn Morgan, and Enid Campbell. I'll just give us a moment just to kneel before God and just empty ourselves spare a thought for those who have been listed here and just take a moment to whisper to your God to your God of grace make a connection right now and bask in his presence our God and our Father in heaven Lord, even the light of day is an evidence of your glory. Father, we realize your creatorship. Father, we, in, in, in the light of day, O oh God, we, we feel your love. Father, we recognize your grace. Father, we recognize your mercy. Because today we have gathered together in your house of worship because you have ordained it to be so. And Lord, you have made it possible to do so. There are those among us who have struggled through another week. There may be some among us who were not sure that we would make it to this day. Father, there are those among us who realize that you are the God of all things. And Lord, even in our struggles, Lord, we can look to you because, God, these struggles are what build our strength and our character. So, Father, today may we feel your hand of comfort and reassurance in us right now. Lord, from the names that were read, there are some who are still mourning because they have suffered loss. Some multiple times, O oh Lord, and maybe wondering how much more they can take. But Lord, we believe that you do not give us more than we can handle. Because as long as we lean on you, then we do not need to handle it ourselves. Because Lord, you have bid us to bring everything to the foot of the cross. So today I pray that hearts will just be emptied right now, even at the sound of my voice. That we will release all our troubles and our trials, O oh God, and we will place them on you. Because you have bid us to come. And Lord, I know that you are pleased when your children come to your throne of grace. So Lord, today, may your Holy Spirit worship with us. Father, may heaven's message be translated to us, O oh God. And Father, may the message of our hearts reach the heart of heaven. And I pray today, O oh God, that we'll be open for your connection. And Father, I pray today that our lives will continue to be changed because we're in the presence of our holy God. Lord, today I pray for our church. May you continue, O oh God, just to cover us. But I pray, O oh God, for the mission that you have placed upon us. May we not lose light of the fact, O oh God, that we are Jesus Christ to the world. And Father, I pray that each and every day, O oh God, as a body and as individuals of the body of Christ, that we are reaching those who need to know our eternal Savior. Father, that we may see lives changed, O oh God, that we may continue to affect and infect our community and those who we come in contact with each and every day. May we never grow weary, O oh God, or grow tired. And Father, may you continue to strengthen us, sustain us, O oh God, in these times. Father, I pray for our church officers, O oh God, Father, you have inspired a nominating committee 
And Lord, there are names who have accepted. And Father, there are people who are ready to do your work. Amen. Father, I pray today that you may just direct us accordingly. Father, I pray for the leadership. Lord, I pray for the officers. I pray for all those who have accepted to serve, O oh Lord. And Lord, there are some who are in the valley of decision. Not quite sure. But Lord, may you speak to them and may they know your purpose for their lives. Father, may we all discover, O oh God, the strength which we have in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So Lord, I pray that we will serve admirably. But we'll serve admirably, O oh Lord, because we lean upon you. We lean on you for direction. Father, we lean upon you for instruction. May we never go it on our own strength, O oh Lord, because we of ourselves are able to achieve nothing. Father, I pray at this moment also for Elder Mears, who is trying to make it here. I pray, O oh Lord, that you may just make his way clear as he is delayed at this time. Father, may your holy angels just protect him. And may your holy angels just guide him, O oh God, as he comes into your house of worship and that you may just continue to be with him, I pray. Father, I also pray for our youth, O oh Lord, and our youth summit that we will have tomorrow. Lord, we are on the cusp of change, and our youth will garner, will usher in this change, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that you will rest upon their hearts that work which you have for them. Let them realize, O oh God, that they are your instruments, O oh God, and they are supremely effective as long as they lean upon you. So may they be able to hear your voice, O oh Father, as you continue to instruct them. And I pray that you'll just bless us, Lord, as we support them in this time. And may their ministry in our church, Father, be reach those far and wide. And Lord, I thank you for how you have used them in the past. And I thank you, Lord, for the work and the, the direction and the purpose that you have for them. I pray, O oh Lord, that they'll be open to fulfilling that purpose. Lord, I pray right now for those who are at this altar. Father, it was not enough for them to stay in their seats today and whisper a prayer to the Lord of heaven. But Lord, they are here because they are shouting a prayer to you right now. Lord, because there's something upon their hearts that would not allow them to just sit still. So Lord, they are kneeling before you and I pray God that you will visit each and every one of them individually. Father, may you touch them. May you see to their needs, O oh Lord. May you see to their desires. Father, I pray for comfort and reassurance at this time on their behalf. And Lord, may your Holy Spirit just move amongst them right now and give them your peace. Father, give us all your peace, I pray. Father, touch us in a, in, in, in a most certain way that we know that we have been touched by the God of heaven. Father, I pray for our speaker today, our pastor. Lord, you have given him the word to bring to your people so many times. But Lord, I know he takes it not for granted. And today is one such day, O oh God, where he has pleaded your Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that you will answer his pleading. Father, may you fill him. Lord, may your blessings flow upon him. Father, I pray that you may inspire him as you've always inspired him before. And Father, these are not just words that he will bring to us, O oh God, but they're life-changing instructions. So I pray, Lord, that each heart will be open to receive and Lord, I pray that as we receive, your Holy Spirit will translate to us the message that we have from our God of heaven. So Lord, I thank you for being available to your people, for us to come to you in this fashion, having the confidence knowing that you hear us because you desire only the best for your people. Be with us now through the rest of our worship. May lives continue to be changed, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
privilege is mine at this time to introduce the pastor to you. He's no other than Dr. Newton Horlett. I observe that he's a very dedicated shepherd to his flock. He's a teacher, a preacher, a mentor. He's considered about every adult and child that is under his care. He loves his congregation and is ready to help in any situation. He's passionate about God's work and teaches his people to be an example of Jesus. He's also very cunning. <laughs> I, know, I know him. I know him from when I used to be at the Fort Myers Shore Seventh-day Adventist Church and I always admire him. So when he was leaving to come down here, and everybody coming down with him, Pastor Me um, Brother Mears and Sister Mears, and everybody leaving. And I said to myself, should I follow the crowd and go with him? And I see everybody I said, okay, I'm going to be left alone in the church up there. The pastor took everybody to come down with him. <laughs> so I said, oh, Sister Mears, I'm going to miss Sister Mears, that precious voice. It was so melodious. I say, oh, pastor, I was wondering if pastor is wicked or what, to take away all these lovely people with him, but it's for a good purpose. So I, after special music, we're going to have a special music. After special music, we'll hear his voice, Pastor Newton Orlet. Amen. Aren't we proud of Jose? Yes. Amen. Amen. And I know somebody else that's proud of him too. Yeah, Sister Annette. And we are so happy for this quality of music for our church today. We're standing together on 2 Kings chapter 22. And we're reading verse 2 together. If 
Do we have it? Second Kings chapter 22 and verse 2. The word of the Lord says, And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in all the way of it again. I want you to really hear this today. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of David his father and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. Right? Your seed is overcoming power and our previous title Breaking chains. Everybody say that, please. Breaking chains. Our sermon topic today is merely be strong. Heavenly Father, we come, we come to learn something from this preacher today. It has been a wonderful BGS week. We have been singing today in the service and participating. As we go further now, we seek and plead the continuance of your Holy Spirit upon them and upon us, so that we might receive your word today and apply our hearts unto wisdom. So speak to and speak through your Holy Servant and speak from your word. And may we learn that which we need. In the name of Jesus we ask, Amen. let the church say, Amen. Amen. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Tell somebody... I am turning things around. Steve Harvey has produced and hosted a show which now airs on Thursday night called Little Big Shot. do amazing things. They have amazing brilliance. They are endowed with extraordinary, extraordinary powers, it would seem. These kids know how to do the skills that they have been endowed with. They are special people. Extraordinary skills. They possess phenomenal talents. If you ever watch the show, you have no choice but to come away in awe. Besides the fact that it is entertaining, it is extremely educational. Some of these little big shots, they know facts at a young age that blows your mind. Science, geography, art, history, mathematics, drama, music, instruments, you name it, they've got it made. Have you ever watched that show? Little Big Shots. Further, they are on track to being famous once they get on stage with Steve Harvey. So that's why these amazing kids are called Little Big Shots. I'm speaking primarily to our little children and youth today. And so I'm asking you as parents to help them to listen and to focus on this sermon. Because this is in concert with our VBS. Have you ever wanted to be a king? Uh, the children, raise your hands for me if you've ever wanted to be a king. Or a queen. Have you ever wanted to be a king or a queen? Oh, okay, all right, good. Well, I have a king right here. I have a king here for you today. His name is King Isaiah Alexis. Everybody say that, please. King Isaiah Alexis. When you see him, respect him, please, because he is king. 
And he's going to sit here with me through the sermon. There are a lot of kings around in our world. King Maswati III reigns in the kingdom of Eswatini. King Abdullah rules in Jordan. King Leslie III reigns in the kingdom of Lesotho. King Felipe VI reigns in the kingdom of Spain. King Carl the 16th, Gustav, reigns in the kingdom of Sweden. And King Vajir Longcorn reigns in Thailand. These kings are old kings. How old do you think you have to be in order to become a king? Anybody? Somebody says 50? 80? You're busting up my sermon. Are there adults here today who have desired to be a king? Some men have referred to themselves as being king of their castle. I've heard it said. I haven't tried that myself. History has served us a variety of kings, and there have been some bad kings, and there have been some good kings. There have been some old kings, and there have certainly been some young kings. Today I want to talk to you children about a young king. This king was a child. You already know of whom I speak. The Bible says this king was how many years old? Eight years old. His name was Josiah. Read the text along with me, please, in verse 1 of 2 Kings 22. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 30 and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidah, the daughter of Adiah of Boscath. That's always important in biblical history. The genealogy is always an important thing. That's the factual detail. He's identified on his maternal side as to who he is with respect to genealogy. If anyone needs to check his stock, they could do so. Genealogy was always important to recognize in biblical times. I've always been fascinated with the story. He was eight years old, and he reigned for 31 years in Jerusalem. He was the same age of King Isaiah Alexis, here sitting on his throne before you. So when you think of Isaiah, of Isaiah you can think of Josiah. They're the same age. And they wore, they wore, I think they wore the same clothes. I'm not too sure about that. But their throne was, was, befet, was fettered with gold. This is exactly how an eight-year-old king looks. Can you imagine being in a country with a king this size and a king this age? Come on now. Some of you will overthrow the government, wouldn't you? But don't mess with Josiah. And don't mess with, I, with Isaiah either. So now here is the substantive content reality. The historical fact is now connected with the spiritual reality. I am depicting King Alexis as a good king. Amen? I am presuming King Alexis to be a type of King Josiah. That's, of course, if he behaves himself. I would need to talk to his genealogy about that. You know, like his mother. I'm depicting King Alexis to be a good king. Here's a lesson for children today. Three spiritual facts I would like each of you to learn from the story of Josiah. One, Josiah did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Josiah was a commandment keeping little boy. He remembered to honor God as creator of the universe. So he obeyed the Ten Commandments of God. So he honored mother and father, Miles. This king here I'm talking about, I want you to hear about him, okay? So he admired, he admired God and his Ten Commandments. Josiah was a commandment keeping little boy. Number two, Josiah walked in the way of David, his father. Josiah was 
a beloved son. He learned that David loved God and that David served God. When David made a mistake, he repented, exhibiting true sorrow for his sin in sackcloth and in ashes. David bowed himself low in penitence, pleading for the forgiveness of God. Josiah admired that. Just like King Isaiah here would admire that in his parents. Amen? So, number three. The Bible says that Josiah turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. That tells me that Josiah walked the straight and narrow way. Amen? He did not deviate from the truth of God. He did not go off track with respect to righteousness or right living. This Josiah boy, he was a good boy. He was like Isaiah, King Alexis. There's a story, though, behind the story that I want you to learn today. You see, King Josiah had to come a long way. King Josiah had to come along and make a decision to go about Watch this. Breaking the chains. Breaking the family chains of dysfunctionality. Are you listening to me? Josiah came from a ragged genealogy. History and genealogy sometimes has a way of haunting family trees. Some families are blessed to have proud, long-standing, and sustainable generations. Other families are, unfortunately, bespeckled with history of which succeeding generations are less than proud because somebody in the genealogy went off on a limb. No pun intended. And they messed up the family tree. So when you read the family tree, there is this person in the family tree that's not looking too pretty based upon the rest of the family. Are you listening to me today? In the case of Josiah, his family tree experienced the change of dysfunctionality. In chapter 21, the story is told. I, I pick, I'll pick up the narrative in verse 15 and explain it to you. Josiah had a grandfather whose name was Manasseh. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. He was another little big shot. This man, this boy, Manasseh, 12 years old. Manasseh's mother was Hephzibah. That's part of Josiah's genealogy. He inherited a good kingdom from his father, who was Hezekiah, this Manasseh boy. Got a good kingdom from his father, who was Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a good king. Hezekiah was Josiah's great-grandfather. So Manasseh did not follow in his father's footsteps. The problem with Manasseh is that he did all that was evil in the sight of the Lord. Are you with me? Let me tell you what Manasseh did. Manasseh built altars for the worship of idols. Manasseh built altars for the worship of creatures rather than the creator. Manasseh brought back all the evils of Baal worship which his father had wiped out of the country already. Hezekiah found a problem in the country. He wiped it out. Manasseh brought it back. Manasseh was not a good king. He was bad. So 2 Kings 21 verse 6 says, that Manasseh did dwell. Manasseh dealt with evil spirits. He dealt with wizards. He used enchantments. Let me break it down for you. Manasseh was an obia man. Okay? Let's just get it straight and plain. Manasseh dealt with voodoo and Ouija boards and witchcraft of every mean order, bringing a, about a great wickedness in the land. He messed around with evil spirits. Manasseh shed innocent blood and sinned beyond measure. He soon would die. 
Follow me here. Manasseh's son was Ammon. Ammon was Josiah's father. Ammon began to reign when he was 22 years old. Ammon's mother's name was Methuselah, the daughter of Haluz and Jotba. That's part of Josiah's genealogy. The Bible says in 2 Kings 21 verse 20, and he did that was evil in the sight of the Lord as his father Manasseh did. So here's the boy Ammon following his father. Manasseh did not follow his father because his father was good. But here comes Ammon and he walks in the footsteps of his father. Verse 21. And did and served the idols that his father served and worshipped them. Ammon was idolatrous. Hmm? Get into genealogy? So now, Children, when Ammon died, the people of the land looked around for a king and they saw in Josiah the qualities of a good king. And so they made Josiah, this eight-year-old boy, king. I wish that some of you would just make Isaiah king today. Because Isaiah is like Josiah. Because you'll hear from the word of the Lord what happened. Watch this. So Ammon becomes, become, uh, dies and the people makes Josiah his son king instead. I gave you the historical genealogy in order to show you how this family tree from which Josiah came was encumbered with the chains of this functionality. Josiah's legacy was not always pretty. Good great-grandfather, evil Grandfather, evil father, his genealogy started out good, but for two generations, his family was in chains. What was he to do at eight years old? What do you expect from this little guy? Huh? You expect him to break the chains, don't you? Josiah had a choice. Children, listen to me. In life, you have a choice to be good or to be bad. Josiah had a choice, and he made the choice which was the right choice. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. This is a lesson for all children and you today, to make the choice for good. It does not really matter how bad your genealogy might have been. You can break the chain with the overcoming power of God. Adults, you know that. You've been there. You've come out of some, some great dysfunctionality yourself. And you have broken the chain through Jesus Christ the Lord. This is mission that is possible. You already heard that king, what King Josiah laid as his foundation of his kingdom. Once he determined to who he would be, he then pursued a pathway to rebuilding the country based on those values. Josiah laid foundations and he pursued possibilities. Children, your parents are helping you to lay a foundation. Your parents are helping you to lay the right foundation. Right now you're looked upon as children who need to chart a pathway of great possibilities for Jesus Christ. So, Doing right in the sight of the Lord is always the best path forward. Walking in the ways of a committed servant of God is non-negotiable. Turning not aside to the right hand or to the left was how Josiah kept focus on his calling and his spiritual roots found in the great grandfather Hezekiah. And so Josiah became a little big shot. Josiah made a choice to serve the Lord based on an informed decision. Yay, yay, yay. Little children, tell somebody, I'm turning things around. I'm turning things around. I may be young, but I'm turning things around. I may look just too young, but I'm turning things around. 
Oh, I know my genealogy went off the beaten tracks when my grandfather showed up. But I'm determined to turn things around. Somebody ought to say amen. Watch this. As Isaiah steadies himself on his throne, Josiah steadied himself in the faith which he had embraced. And then in the 18th year of his reign, when he was now 26 years old, he made a discovery. Wow, yeah, he's been serving the Lord throughout his little big shot years, childhood and youth, and now young adult. Verse 3 says, and it came to pass in the 18th year of the reign of King Josiah that the king sent Shapan. Shapan was a scribe. Shapan was the son of Isaiah, the son of Methuselah, and the scribe of the house of the Lord, saying, I'll tell you the rest of the story from that verse. Josiah sent Shapan to Hilkiah the high priest, telling him to collect all the money and start working on the new church. That sounds like something we ought to do. Uh, there were people giving money left and right at the beginning of the, at the door of the church, and there were people collecting that money. Hilkiah was a priest, and Josiah sent to him and said, listen, I think we're ready to go. Verse 5, Josiah sent word that Hilkiah should get the workers together and give them the money because they know what to do in order to repair the breaches of the Lord's house. There have been some breaches in God's house. There are many types of breaches that take place from time to time. Some people don't act right. Some people don't live right. And there are breaches in the church of God. Well, in the building, there are also breaches. Things were falling apart, and they were in need of repair. Uh, somebody ought to say amen. You know what I'm talking about. Josiah realizes that there were some breaches in the Lord's house. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that neither Josiah nor Hilkiah did any accounting of the money that was given to the carpenters, the builders, or the masons. These workers went out and they bought the timber. They got the hewn stones to do the job without any checks and balances. Do you know why? Bible says, because, says the word of the Lord, they dealt faithfully. Amen. Oh, you're not listening to me today. <laughs> These workers were faithful workers. They could trust them with the money in the church. So Josiah or Hilkiah didn't have to do an accounting of the money that was collected. He just gave them the money. Hilkiah just said, come, you come to, here's some money. You're a mason, here's some money. Take the money, go, go get some timber, get some hewn stones. Come back and rebuild the church of the living God. They dealt faithfully. Amen? Faithfully. I like that. So as they started to work and, and feel their way around the rubble of the temple, Ahilkiah the priest saw something. It's a moment that I want you to remember. When he set out to rebuild the church, then it was that the scriptures were found. The book of the law was found. The Bible was in the church all these years. It had picked up dust. It had been lost in the genealogy. Are you listening to me? And it took Josiah to get something moving in order for the priest to go find the book of the law in the rubble of the temple. This discovery was a moment in time. I want to let you know that for 75 years, the Bible was lost in the country. Listen to that carefully. 75 years. No Bible, no word of the Lord, no book of the law was being read. 75 years. No wonder their genealogy got all messed up. Are you listening to me? Because there was no reading of God's law taking place. There was a dearth for the word of the Lord in the land. But it took this little big shot. Realize that when the word of the Lord is lost, in your house, then you will be overcome by the chains of dysfunctionality. Children, listen to me. If you want to be a real little big shot, you must keep the word of the Lord with you all the days of your life. Are you listening to me today, King Isaiah? So when the book of the law is not around, families get messed up. The genealogy gets messed up. 
everything gets messed up. Somebody help me preach here. So Hilkiah, when he finds the book, you know what he did? He took the book. Imagine he had to dust that book off, clean it up. And he said to Shaphan, come here. And he said to Shaphan, listen, take this book to the king. Take the book to the king. It's always the blessed thing yes. to send the book to the one in charge. Yes. To give the word of the Lord to the one in charge. Yes. So Shaphan comes down, back to the king. He takes this book to the king, tells the king about what had happened. And so the king said, read it. Read it to me. And then Shaphan read the God. He's the scribe, you know. He knows how to write and read. Little children, he can read and write. So now he's reading the book to the king. So he read the book to King Josiah. And when he read the book, the heart of Josiah was moved. His, his body started to twirl around him. His brain started to be firing off because there were some things he was hearing that he hadn't heard all his life. He didn't hear it from his grandfather. He didn't hear it from his father. Oh, he was too young to hear it from his great-grandfather. Here now he's hearing this and shaping his reading. And you know what Josiah does? He begins to tear his clothes off of him. He rent his clothes because there's something moving in his soul that he hadn't felt before. He says, read on. And he rent his clothes. And he said, you know what? Take the book back to Hilkiah for me. And tell him not only to do that, to, to read it some more, but I want him to go inquire of the Lord. Because my people have been in trouble. Yes. Judah has been in trouble. Yes. And I want to seek the Lord to find out what he's going to do with Judah. Because the Bible just told me he's been upset with Judah. Because he, they haven't been keeping his word. It's been lost in the land. And so Shaphan goes back to Hilkiah. And, he, and watch this. You watch this now. Hilkiah, Hilkiah gets the word from the king, right? And so Hilkiah goes up and he inquires of the Lord. Do you know where Hilkiah went? Hilkiah went to the college. And at the college, this is the reason why he went to the college. At the college was the prophetess. The prophetess of the Lord lived at the college. Her husband was a keeper of the ward war, of the ward room. But here in the college is where the prophetess resided. It says a lot to me about colleges, about schools of the prophets. That's how we got the name. Schools of the prophets, because Holder was up there at the college living. And so Hilkiah had to go talk to Hulda. Let me tell you this. Do not despise the word of the prophets of the Lord. Ah, you're not listening to me today, are you? Do not despise the words of the prophets of the Lord. There's some of you who don't like to read that and what? There's some of you who think it's hard reading. Some of you young people don't like to pick up the book because you, you think it's hard reading. But that's why we read it every Wednesday night in prayer meeting. We've been reading these books for years, and she has been revealing a lot to us. And on, Sun, on Wednesday night, like this past week, we learned from Abraham the Patriarch how to train up children. Yeah. Hot dog, I didn't know that the Patriarch had it in him. Yeah. Yes. It took a little big shot, like King Isaiah, to get things right. So the prophetess gets back now to Hilkiah. And Hilkiah gets back to the king and tells the king, listen man, here's what we got to do. Here's what we got to do. Everybody got to serve the Lord. Amen. Everybody got to read his book. And then they spread the word throughout the whole country. You see, Josiah is in charge of Judah. And so he gives the word. Every man, every woman, every child got to read the word of the Lord. Or else the curse will be upon us. But if we want to get rid of the curse of the chains of dysfunctionality, we've got to read the word of the Lord. Amen. Ah, somebody got to say amen. amen. Somebody got to shout hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Isaiah, Alexis, you too can make the right decision for your God. You too can determine your future with Christ by choosing not to be distracted. By not turning away from what God has shown you. 
in his straight and narrow way. You too, King Alexis, you too can change your nation. You too can break the chains of dysfunctionality. There is a place for little big shots who will turn things around. And whereas there was evil, now they can make it good. Well did Isaiah picture the new earth of restoration and peace in the new earth when he said, A little child shall lead them. Lead them, O King Isaiah. Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, and live. And like a newborn baby, don't be afraid to crawl, and remember when you walk, sometimes we fall. So fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus only, and steep and filled with pain. So if your sky is dark and pours the rain, then cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus.
Thank you so much, kids. God bless you as you minister in this church. Before I do the final prayer, just to keep everybody together, I want to read the list, which is an additional list to the one you heard already this morning. So everybody who was on that list of officers and assistants, you're expected to be at the officers meeting tomorrow. And I want you to meet with me right over here in the first five benches on the organ side. I'm going to add to that list now. And if your name was already on that list, then the repetition deepens the impression. Savon Anderson, Genevieve Desarmes, Lawrence Joseph, Mark Anneville, Ose Allen, Don Panton, Ashley Mears, Rowena Samuels, Alexis Francis, Brianna Neal, Gabrielle Pierre Louise, Paul Mears Jr., Stephen Ayres, that's Jr., Eric Bromfield, Deborah Henry, Maurice Henry, Michael Mears, Claude Gordon, Kenneth Santo, Mike Anneville, Cassie Francis, Romario Campbell, Regan's Fortune, Lynn Below, Rodney Etienne, Malia Williams, Angelica Dubois, Nathan Campbell, Dorothy Delpy, Stephen Pierre, Cleani Augustine, Christia Williams, Penina Aklush, David Mears, Tyler Neal, Odensky Ranu, Eileen Guerrero, Jalen Augustine, Joel Lewin, David Lewin, Elizabeth Aklush, Kezia Goodman, Attila Kiss, and Nicholas Bennett. Please meet me all over on this side after we have dismissed. I will not be at the door, so everybody come quickly to your positions here for me, please. Let's all stand for prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the example of young King Josiah. I pray that children might have the lessons riveted in their hearts today and that adults and old age might give them help, give them support, give them good directions for their pathways to progress. And may the Holy Spirit be with them to waft them on their way. Grant, Lord, that all our little children might receive this blessing today from your hand. And may parents be happy with you and in you because of your word given today. So forgive us of our sins and hear our prayer, dear Lord. And we would be willing to serve you and to surrender ourselves all over again today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we pray. Amen. Let the church say, Amen. 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 The king at the door. Shake hands with the king. Say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen.
Shake hands with the King Isaiah at the door for me today. Thank you. 